if you've landed on this video, it means that you're most likely researching how you're going to be incubating your next set of quail, chicken, or any other type of egg bearing animal. And then you've come to the right place because today we're talking about the Nurture 360, which is right here next to me and is what we use here at our homestead. We've done a bunch of different hatchings from this incubator and we've had really great success. But within creating this video today, I did do a bunch of research on different pros and cons that others have said in the marketplace of why they truly like this product versus not, and I'm gonna deliver them all to you. If you don't already know me, my name is Danielle of the Sparrow Farm, and welcome to our channel. But without further ado, let's talk first about the Nurturite 360. Now the Nurturite 360 is a really good beginner level incubator. It comes at a relatively low cost in comparison to a lot of the other incubators out there. So if you are newer to incubation, this is really great because it's really easy to get this item. You're usually gonna find it at Tractor Supply or any other mills or honestly, just purchasing from a website and I'll include a link down below. Now, I'm not sure of the pricing today because we bought ours a while ago and with inflation, I honestly don't know how much it's gone up, but we've had ours for a little over a year and we've truly loved it. It's made it through the test of time. And some of the features that we really like about it is it has a digital front so you can easily put in the temperature and humidity that you need. There is a side port that you can go ahead and add additional water throughout the process. We usually we'll just put ours into a item that has like a spout so you can easily just pour it in. Nothing spills anywhere and that's been really great for us. Now once you're actually getting into your incubation, you are going to want to make sure that you are turning your eggs. When you set up this, it will actually automate the turning for you, which is amazing. One thing to note is that the Nurturite 360 is really made for chicken incubation or dug egg incubation. So the stock item that you're going to get the egg holder is usually going to be four bigger eggs. Now we will just double ours in there, but we have seen that sometimes when it does turn the eggs, they won't always turn completely. So something to really watch out for. I've talked to some other individuals and they actually will go ahead and manually turn as well, just to make sure that everything's turning and they're really watching over it. But you can set it up to actually do three automated turns throughout the day and throughout the process of what you're doing. Now, once you're into the stage of total lockdown, there is a valve at the top that you can close off any of the additional air growing through, and you can lift up the egg turner tray so that it's completely removed, and this way, any of your quail can really hatch out in that area, and they're able to have a bigger space that they can go through. Um, another item that's pretty cool about the incubator is there is a light that you can test out to um, candlelight your eggs, basically. So you can just flip on that light. You can see here it's throwing a bright light here. It's a little hard to do with quail eggs, I am going to admit, but um, it's just hard for quail eggs in general. It's hard to see in them. Now we're gonna jump into the pros and cons. First off, let's go through our pros. Now I have an actual full list of pros and cons here, so we'll break down each one of them. And the first one is that there is an automatic egg turner. So what this is gonna do is it will automatically turn it. Some other types of machines, you'll actually have to manually go in and do it, which can be hard if you're opening the cover, letting out the heat, the humidity in order to do that, and it could cause a lower hatch rate. Where here, it's gonna automatically do it, and you can also trigger a turn by just pressing both the plus and minus button. Now, we also talked about some other pros here. There is a digital faceplate, so you can see all of the numbers there. You don't need a thermometer or humidity measurements. Everything's gonna be in there for you. You can add additional water for the humidity. You can just put that in here. It'll run through the bottom and add water throughout the entire system, which is really great. 
there is an air hole at the top. You can remove that turner after the system. We have that candler and there is an additional tray that you can do. So as I said earlier, this tray is for chicken eggs, but they do have quail egg trays available that you can purchase. I've also seen that if any items of your incubator are actually broken or damaged or anything like that, you can go ahead and get um, separate pieces for those as well. So overall, really good. We've had a lot of great success with ours and I really love it. But while doing the research for this video, there were a bunch of cons about it and I don't want to just tell you all the positives that we faced, but I also want to open our eyes out to different cons that other people have seen and that we have maybe seen as well. So the first con is one that I've definitely recognized and that is it is hard to clean. Now when you actually are going in, you can take out all the pieces and you just really need to like get a really good sponge and clean in there between different incubations. It will get pretty messy once everyone started to hatch and all of that fun stuff is going on. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you're cleaning up that. I've also noticed that when you are in the stage, lockdown's over, all of your quail or chicks are in there, you're going to lift the lid and there really isn't a barrier for any of the animals to stay in there. So it's really hard once you've hatched out to kind of individually transfer all of these little guys into your actual brooder that's been really difficult so we'll usually take like a box put them all in there and then bring them over to our brooder or we'll actually take the full incubator drop it in our brooder and then kind of move everyone out but it makes it a little bit harder we've definitely had some quail just popping out um and you kind of have to chase them down so that's definitely a con it makes it a little bit harder throughout the process but sometimes it makes it a little bit fun and interesting as well <laughs> Another con is that there can be discrepancies within the humidity and the temperature. It's known to be a lot hotter in the center and then cooler in the sides, which can be a little deterrent on the temperature. And some of the humidity readings have been off, which overall, this isn't going to cause like a huge significant issue, but it is going to lower your hatch rates. And if you are starting off with quail or chickens and you're hatching out one or two out of 10 different quail and you're only getting that 20% hatch rate, that's really not as good as say a 50% hatch rate. Now we've had probably 50 to 70% hatch rates. The other time we incubated our power went off in the middle of it in the middle of the night and our hatch rate was very low because of that. But overall, we've had really great hatch rates, but I have heard talkings of people that have not had the best. So it is something to keep in mind. Now, some tips and tricks for this to have the most success. Now, first off, definitely making sure that you don't lose power. As I said, uh, keeping in an area that is going to maintain power is going to be key. I think we've talked to other people as well. And right in that spring time is when a lot of large storms happen and a lot of individuals are usually most excited for hatching out quail or chicken or anything of the likes and you want to make sure that you're going to catch a good time not something you can always keep in mind for but if you have a generator as a backup it's going to make sure that you have the most flawless execution of your incubation another item that we like to do in our house. So we started off having the incubator in our kitchen. This was great because every morning we drink our coffee, see our little guys and their progress and kind of see movement. It was really fun to watch. And as a family, it was really entertaining. As we've been doing this for a while, we've realized that putting the incubator in an area that isn't going to fluctuate too much in temperatures. So our kitchen actually had a back door and some of the air would come in and out. We'd leave it open. It made it a little bit more apt to fluctuating in air and humidity there. So we like to keep it in a guest room, something that isn't going to get as much traffic in and keep it in a table that it isn't going to get bumped or moved on. And then we always keep our water nearby in an easy to pour spout like i said earlier one that has something that's easy to pour because when you are pouring it in sometimes the water can fall out and you don't want to be spilling water everywhere and then also every morning we'll kind of go in and a lot of times the humidity is going to be the lowest in the morning so we'll go in top off that humidity first thing so that we have more maintenance on what's going on and additionally the last item is just going to be making sure 
that you are really looking at the turning, you're making sure that it's working. And although you can set all of the digital times on your nurturates, you can say, oh, we only need this to go for 16 days at 16 days turn off or stop turning, which is great. I always keep a calendar on my computer where on my calendar I'll put notes of specific dates so that I can keep an eye on what's going on as well. So when that power did go off, we we're like, well, you know, it doesn't have the dates on here, but I have it on my calendar. I have the knowledge there and I can go back and kind of see what's going on. But I hope that you guys found this video informative. In the end, we love our Nurture 360. I definitely suggest it for anyone getting started, anyone that's looking for an affordable and good solution and something that not only has just easy to use, but I love this 360 view. It really allows for you to watch what's going on and when they do start to hatch out, it's really entertaining to watch. So I suggested, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and it was informative and we'll see you guys again next time. Bye.